What only you can do. Hallelujah. It's a brand new day, Lord. We give you all the praise. It's a brand new week. We say, Blessed be your name. The Lord has ushered us yet into another month. It's the beginning of another working day of the week and also another month. This is October. Praise the name of the Lord. October has come. You know, September just ended and we are glad for the mercy of God that have ushered us into this month. We are grateful for the mercy, the kindness and the goodness of the Lord that have created times and seasons. We can't take it for granted. We are returning all the praise all the glory all adoration to the name of the lord our god in the name of jesus hallelujah good morning to you my name is pastor joy and this is the platform of behold your god and behold your god we declare the counsel of god we herald the whole counsel of god the word of god as god has commanded us and he has commanded us to speak forth his word and like we say most of the times we address men we preach the word of god but so many times also we speak to forces to powers that be we confront circumstances and situations we also address works of wickedness sent to har arrest the progress of people we declare the counsel of god and also the judgment of god so every weekday as we have been commanded by the lord we speak forth his word and into this word of God, we can see the heart of God. We can behold God as he really is. And we continue with what God has placed in our hands. As we look at this topic, expressing the spirit of Christ. Expressions of the spirit of Christ. Throughout this week, by the help of the Lord, we will be looking at this. Why we trust the Lord to do amazing things in our life. Expressions of the spirit of Christ. We'll be handling it through this week. And we trust the Lord that is going to speak forth his word. We trust the Lord that is what is going to come with precision. We trust the word Lord that his people will be blessed as they hear the word. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give God praise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We continue. We're going to read the scripture. Scriptures. What are we talking about when we refer to the expressions of the Spirit of Christ? The expressions of the Spirit of Christ. It's so, I'm so excited looking at what the Lord is doing. So excited about it. I tell you, in the mercy of the Lord, He gives us His word. He gives us his counsel and we speak forth his word. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, you start reading the scriptures from the book, from the New Testament. Then we go back to the Old Testament. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to look at Christ himself. We're going to start by looking at how he expressed it. Yes, from Mark chapter 14. I want to read verse 65. The Bible says, And some began to spit on him, my God, and to cover his face, and to buffet him, and to say unto him, Prophesy. And the servants did strike him with the palms of his hands. Hence, this is the description of what was going on before Christ Jesus was crucified for us. 
We saw that the gospel is meant to be expressed with a spirit. And that is the spirit we are describing, the spirit of Christ. I am trusting the Lord to give us insight into this. It has been one of the things that is, is being withdrawn from the expressions of the gospel in our generation that needs to be recovered. If the word of God must be communicated, if the spirit of Christ must be communicated, if the word that God has given to us to preach must be communicated, it must be communicated with this Spirit. I remember the Lord Jesus at a particular time. We're going to read that scripture in the course of the week where he came to a particular city of the Samaritans and we saw how he, he, he was rejected in this particular village and the, and the disciples were so angry. And then two of the disciples expressed something to Jesus. He said, Lord Jesus, will you want us to call down fire from heaven like Elijah did and consume these people. Why are they rejecting what we are giving out? Jesus said, no, no, no. You do not know the spirit that you are of. The kind of spirit, the manner of spirit. Can I let you know very clearly that God expects us to carry on this work of God with a particular spirit. Spirit, he is expecting us to give up. Do you know why? Because what we are presenting is the salvation of God, the salvation and the redemption of mankind. And we are expected to show forth as we give it out. It is called the water of life. The Bible says, Whosoever drink, whosoever shall drink of this water shall taste no more. There is a spirit that we used to expect press this gospel of Jesus and we are going to be looking at it throughout the week while we trust the Lord that everyone that is ministering the word of God in whatever capacity must be careful to express it why because we have seen a generation where the word of God is being released with strife where the word of God is being released without this spirit of Christ and the truth is that anywhere where this gospel is expressed without the commensurate spirit that goes with it, there's not going to be any impact. We can't leave any deposit and start giving wrong impressions of what the spirit of Christ is all about and God's intention for man. We saw here that Christ at the point even though he ha he can he can he can just you know he submitted himself to everything he was going through and that is how every minister is supposed to do as we are expressing this gospel the bible says and some of them began to spit imagine spitting on you as we preach the gospel the spat on him the bible says they covered his face oh my god they blindfolded him another scripture said he said and they were buffeting him they were are beating him they we are hitting him the bible says they said unto him prophesy and the servants imagine servants as in servants of the people that are not of god the bible says they were striking him they were hitting him even with the palms of their hands and what was jesus's response he did nothing we're going to look at why God expects us to express this gospel in this way. Why we trust him to begin to, you know, to lead us through this path. Because one of the things that will make the gospel ineffective in our mouth is the way we really share the gospel. I want to go way back to the Old Testament and find out something that happened there and how God, praise the name of Jesus, it's going to be a little, okay, not so long a reading. We're going to read some two verses in 1 Kings chapter 22. We are reading 23 and 24. The Bible says, Now therefore, now therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets. This is the story of Ahab. You know the story? where he went to war and he wanted a confirmation. There is something we're going to pick up from this place and see how God expects the ministers to express. But I want to say something regarding it as I continue. The Bible says, but 
the Lord has put the lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. Verse 24. But Zedekiah, the son of Shenaniah, went near and smote, see that word again, my God, and smote Micaiah on the cheek. That means he slapped him, my God, and said, which way went the spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? Wow. I read verse 25. The Bible says, And Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see in that day, when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. The spirit by which this spirit this prophet Micaiah expressed the word of God is something that is worth emulating. Is something that whatever you know, this happened in the Old Testament. We also see the display for everyone that have been a child of God who has been called of God to carry this water of life to the dying world. The world is dying in sin. The world is dying in afflictions of the enemy. And the only salvation is the gospel that God has committed to the men he has called. And this man he has called with the gospel carries out this gospel with the certain kind of spirit. Even though we are, we, we are seeing that a lot of places are clouded with people who are supposed, like this man called Zachariah here, he is supposed to be represented Presenting the gospel, but we saw that he had another spirit and also another intention. Yet it doesn't make us who are carrying the word of God not to express the word in detail. There is something about this scripture I would like to point out. The Bible says that this same king, if you look at that place, I want to take time to read the Bible. It says from verse 8 of this first king, chapter 22. I'm going to read it. It's a little long reading. The Bible says, And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him. Wow. For he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said unto him, Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. This is a man who is actually trying to inquire word from the Lord like people of this day that want to say prophesy to us and they say there is this particular man among all the prophets. I don't like that man. Now this is an evil man who is longing to hear good from the mouth of the minister of the gospel. He is a king, King Ahab, who knows that he does wickedly. The Bible recorded that he did more wickedly than any other that king that went before him yet he, he doesn't like it when somebody preaches or teaches or tells him the truth he said I hate him for he does not prophesy good concerning me but evil I believe that Micah is one of Micaiah is one of the men that God is really proud of. Who doesn't care? He don't care whether the word of God in my mouth is offending you. I am preaching it because I know that that is the only salvation of men. And look at his expression. He was not stiff about it. He would still speak this word of God that God had placed in his mouth. He knew it was irritating, irritating to the king. Unlike uh, what's his name? As, as uh, Zachariah, or who 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 was there to tell the king what they wanted to hear, he went to the extent of slapping the man of God, hitting him, and yet we saw how this Micaiah was calmly telling him, "You are smiting me." You're asking me where went the spirit of God from me to you to speak to you. He told him you will see on that day. You know, I look at this spirit, this meek and quiet spirit. I say, oh Lord, what is spirit of Christ expressed in the Old Testament? You know what? For everyone that must carry on this word of God, this work of God to men, there is a disposition God expects us. And my earnest prayer for every minister of the gospel that whatever it is the enemy is putting pressure you know if there are is, is men of our generation where the enemy is mounting pressure they are telling you praise your preach what we want to hear no wonder the bible talked about our men of this generation that they have 
itching ears. They want to hear. Not that they want to change. They want to hear what is acceptable to them like a harp of old. Yet this man was consistently telling him what God said. In fact, if you study, I want you to read that place in 1 Kings chapter 22. Read the entire place. You will see where he told him, ah, haven't I told you to always tell me what God said? This man is insisting on hearing what God said yet. In fact, I want to read that place. The Bible says, but I hate him for he he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Verse 9. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten Dita, Micaiah, the son of Imla. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, sat each on his throne, having put on their robes in a void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. Note it, all the prophets. All of these prophets are those who are prophesying what the king wanted to hear. And not what God is saying. Only one man among all of them stood and was speaking what God was saying. And it comes for us to really know. In the multitude of all we are hearing in this generation, how many people are really standing and speaking. And what is this gospel? You know, it's something that is really calling for, for attention because the gospel we see being displayed in this generation is a gospel of convenience, a gospel that pronounces blessings. No wonder people are, who doesn't want blessing? People are re reaching out, how oh, bless me, prophesy to me. And the gospel is not just for the blessings the salvation of man is the ultimate and that is why the internal classic found in the word of god quoted by jesus himself in john 3 16 that says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever whosoever believe in him will not perish he didn't say whosoever believe in him will have everything they look for he didn't say for whosoever believe in him will be prophesied to and things will turn around. We are having a gospel that is so distorted that the main message of the gospel has been thwarted. It is about the redemption of man. Any other thing can be added. If you are seeking for men that will prophesy to you and seeking for men that will see you, give you direction without caring for your soul, I tell you that that is a damnable heresy. That is a gospel but boy, Paul put it this way, another gospel. Some people are everywhere teaching another gospel that is not the gospel of Christ and is being expressed without the spirit of Christ. Jesus said, for whosoever that believe in him will not perish. And that is the purpose why God sent the Lord Jesus. And this is a gospel we preach and we preach it with the spirit of grace. We are expressing this because if you cannot recognize the spirit behind the gospel that is preached then that spirit is not the spirit of god i want to finish this the bible says they sat there and this prophet prophesied before them and zedekiah oh my god zedekiah that's his name not zachariah zedekiah the son of shenaniah made him horns of iron maybe he call it loudspeaker or whatever and he said <laughs> thus says the Lord with this shall thou push the Syrians until thou have consumed them and all the prophets prophesy so saying go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper for the Lord shall deliver it into thy hand you know how the story went with all these prophecies with all the accolades and the, all the noise that was being declared all around this oh go forth to prevail in Ramoth Gilead and yet when Ahab went there he was killed. That was the battle that ate him up. And you know what? It doesn't matter the false prophecies that may be there to let you know, oh, don't worry, anybody prophesying to you with iniquity in your life and they are not telling you that the life of sin will sink you throughout eternity in the lake of fire. Anyone prophesying to you, telling you to be comfortable in iniquity and is a gospel of convenience and they are not pointing out your sin, telling you to repent 
repent and leave your evil ways these are the people who are prophesying like this i wonder what happened in the whole of israel when this same man who is the national prophet zedekiah he was declaring everybody Bible said he meant horn speakers he made the horns and was saying take it and go forth you will push them you will push the enemy yet he saw that all of Israel scattered, all of them ran away, and the king died. Yet, the word of God stands sure. Imagine what could have happened, because we saw this man of God say clearly, he said, and the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, behold now, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. I like Micaiah. Come on now. And Micaiah said, as the Lord liveth, what the Lord said unto me, that will I speak. That is a man who made up his mind. And that is supposed to be for everyone who has been commissioned with the gospel of Christ. We speak the word. It doesn't matter whether it is palatable or not sometimes what god places in our mouth is the word of comfort even within that comfort will still tell you you cannot be comfortable in sin if you want god to comfort you while you are still living comfortably in sin is an erroneous gospel it is not the gospel of our lord jesus the bible said let everyone that name it the name of the lord depart from iniquity and in case you are hearing us today the lord is really calling you to depart from the prophecies of lies how do you recognize them as if they are, they are as liars when they don't care to point out the sin that you are living in when they are not calling you to turn away from your evil ways and when you don't see them live a life of transparency when you don't see them live a life that is worthy of emulation then you should turn away from them and what are we talking about we are talking about the expression of the spirit of Christ when we declare this word of God we declare it by a particular kind of spirit and by the grace of God we're gonna be looking at it deeper as we continue through the week but today in my conclusion what I want to conclude with this is that you should be able to recognize what the gospel is all about let me finish this. The Bible says, and Micaiah said, as the Lord liveth, what the Lord put in my mouth, that will last week. Verse 15. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered, go and prosper, for the Lord shall divide into thy hand, <laughs> the hand of the king. And the king said unto him, how many times? That means several times he has spoken with this particular man. He said, how many times shall I adjure thee that thou shalt Tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord. That means he constantly speaks with this man and he will always tell him the truth. And the Bible says, and he said, Behold, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he will not prophesy? He will prophesy no good concerning me but evil. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on the right hand and on the left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner and the other said on that manner. We see the transaction that was going on in the spiritual realm in the realm of the invisible yet these prophets are prophesying. How many prophets do we have today prophesying? And there is doom behind the scene. And they won't tell people that. People are every day galloping into eternity without Christ. Yes, we have prophets prophesying to them. They are galloping into condemnation. Please read that place to yourself. And if you care for your soul, if you don't just care for material things, you know, these material things, the Lord actually promised so that they shall be added to us. 
These material things that you are clamoring for, they will be added unto you when you really seek after the kingdom of God. When you seek his righteousness, you cannot be seeking material things and calling for prophecies to be prophesied upon you for you to acquire those things when you have no righteousness. When you are living in unrighteousness, it is a call for you to look into your life and know that the blessing God gives, he gives gives it to those who have been washed. The Bible says, no good thing will live withhold from them that walk uprightly. And you are thinking that uprightness doesn't pay. No. Even though we live in a corrupt generation, yet I announce to you that uprightness pays. I'm so excited about uprightness. I tell you, you don't need to hide anything when you are living upright. You don't need to, 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 to remember what you say because you are saying the truth at all times. And when you stand on the truth, I tell you something, you are representing God in this evil generation. I pray that you will come to the point where you consider your eternity and stop running after the prophets that will prophesy lies. The prophecies that are not backed up with integrity, with the word of God, with the fear of God. You better run for your life and fear eternity. The Bible says their worms do not die. The fire is not quenched. Everyone shall be salted with fire. Why would they be salted with fire? The details of the punishment of eternity without Christ. You can't even calculate it. Jesus said clearly, he that hath ears, let him hear. What would they hear? That God has sent his son. Anyone that have rejected the son have refused to accept the testimony that God gave concerning Jesus. You that is hearing us today, will you reject this offer? It is the spirit of grace. It is the water of life. Forget all those things you are looking for and pursuing for. It is so sad that our generation is being deceived into looking out for things that will not satisfy. The things that are so empty, material are things that will fade with time and they are not seeking the internal treasure. May the Lord deliver this generation from materialism. May the Lord deliver this generation from, 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 from the pursuit of vanity. May the Lord deliver everyone whose heart is crying. I see people doing all manner of things just to, just to get the, 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 the material things that will just fade away. They do all manner of things. They don't care whose ox is God. They don't care whatever it is that they, they exchange just for immediate gratification. What a deprived generation. Yet, God is calling for those who are, who are looking deep to see value. Do you see value? Or do you just want to satisfy right now your desire? Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things shall be added unto you. I want to pray for somebody who wants to say, Lord, I, 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 really, I really want to live the pursuit of all these things. I really want to focus. I really want to, you know, all this prophecy, prophesying, that's one of the major challenges we are having in this generation, where people are everywhere prophesying, as far as they are concerned, they are giving out something to the people. Meanwhile, it is not the word of God. Why will you perish? Hearing only what you want to hear but not hearing the word of God. Don't be like Ahab who says, I hate that man. A man of God, he said, I hate him because he does not prophesy good to me. Do you just want good to be prophesied to you or do you want to hear the truth that will make you to depart from evil? He said, I hate him. He prophesied evil to me. The truth is that what we speak is evil to somebody who insists on living in sin. It is a condemnation for you if you hear this word and and continue back in iniquity is a word of condemnation. But our prayer is that you don't perish. Our prayer is that you live your evil ways. You live your wicked ways. You turn today and say, Lord, I have dwelt so much in sin. And like the prodigal son, I return back today. I want to pray for somebody that is ready to turn from their wicked ways to say, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Please, I have dwelt long enough in sin. 
and I want to return to you today. I ask you, Lord, to forgive my sins. Go ahead and talk to God. He's your father. He is sending us with this word because he doesn't want anyone yet to perish as the earth is being, of, it's being folded up, as the generation is being rounded up. Yes, he still looks for men that can turn away from darkness and he will give them light. The Bible says, and Christ will shine on you. Say, Lord Jesus, shine on me. Shine your light on me. Let every area of darkness be broken in my life. Father, break that yoke of sin in the life of somebody hearing me right now. Break that hold of sin and the chains of slavery in sin. Let it be broken today in the name of Jesus. Release your blessings upon them in the name of Jesus. Thank you for today, Lord. Today is Monday, the 3rd of October. 3rd of October. Wow. Hallelujah. And we are giving God praise every day. We're giving praise for a beautiful day. Hallelujah. We call today blessed. As you go forth into your business, into what you do, I ask for the blessings of the Lord to be established in your life in case there is any harassment, in case there is any demon, demonic oppression around you, in case there is a spell that has been released, the spell of backwardness, in case there is already an enchantment released over your business or your family or your health or any part of your life, we declare right now that every activity of hell be arrested in your life. In the name of Jesus, you go forth and speak the word of God, declare that I am a child of God, I am walking in the light in the midst of this darkness declare your stand and you see God stand with you and stand for you in the name of Jesus. Have a beautiful day in Jesus. Mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord Jesus. We give you all the praise and give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you Lord. Hallelujah.